Welcome to the Church of Christ at Washington Park. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the This evening. It's a pleasure to be able to stand before you this evening and preach the gospel of Christ. Yes, Hope and pray that something might be said that would cause someone to get a little closer to God. Yeah. I thank God, the Father, our Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ for this opportunity yes, sir. to stand before you this evening mm -hmm. to preach the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you open your Bible and turn with me to the scripture reading that was read by Brother James Thomas. Mm -hmm. In the scripture read of 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 7. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, yes. who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be, to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You know, in that scripture reading that was read, uh, Apostle Peter mentions in verse 7 of chapter of that chapter and wrote that the trial of our faith right. is more precious than gold that has been tried with fire that our faith might be found unto praise and honor and glory yes. at the appearing of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this evening that our faith in Jesus Christ will be put to the test. Mm -hmm. And there will be many tests. Mm -hmm. And the question I want to ask is, will you pass the test? All right. All right. Will you pass the test? Yes, sir. See, if we pass this, this test of faith called life, our reward will be eternal life, and joy, and peace, and happiness in the presence of God. Yeah. That will be a glorious time. All right, you see, but in this life, this life is full of wars, rumors of wars, yes. persecutions, and hatred. Life is full of heartaches, Heartbreaks right. and backaches. Right. This life is full of pain, right. sickness, and death. Yes, yes. Life is full of ups and downs and changes and turnarounds. Yes, These are just a few obstacles that will get in our way that the devil will use to try to keep us right. from having a good relationship with God. Yes. You see, the main objective of Satan is to keep us from making it home to heaven, mm -hmm. to be with God. The Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. But as long as we stay on the Lord's side right. mm -hmm. and be obedient, and if we continue to trust in God and always acknowledge that God has taken good care of us, yes. everything is going to be all right. Yes. It's going right. to be all right. Yes. Turn me to Psalms, if you will. Psalms ch chapter verse uh, chapter fifty six. Psalms 56, we're going to look at verse 11. It says, In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Put your trust in God. 
put your trust in God day in and day out. You see, I want to talk about life. Life happens. Some of those things I just talked about, the things we go through in life, life happens. But if we fail the test called life, then our reward would be eternal punishment and torment and pain and suffering. The total opposite of, of what God had intended for us. Right. So you see that this life that we live is a very important test. Mm. The outcome of this test of faith called life will be determined where we will spend our eternity. Mm. This is why we should look at this life as being a very important test. Mm -hmm. A test we can't afford to fail. Yeah. You know, when we were in school, we took those tests. Sometimes we didn't study for those tests. We hope we will, fail, we will pass and not fail. But this is a test we can't, aff can't afford to fail. Yeah, right. You know, and in order not to fail, we got to study for the test. Yeah, study for the test. We're going to have to study the Word of God. Right. In 2 Timothy, 2.15, it tells us in order to rightly divide the word of truth, we have to study, and study hard. Mm -hmm. And when we rightly divide the word of God, we will find that Christ only has one church. Amen. And the Lord has to say to it. Most of us here have taken the driver's license test, and for those who haven't, I want you to know that first you need to study the driver's handbook. <laughs> issued by the state because it's very important for you to know the state laws and the rules of driving on the highways and, and byways that if you want to pass the driver's test you need to study right. yes. same way we'll pass this test of faith called life we got to study the word of god yes. but when dealing with those driver's license those driver's tests you need to know what all those street signs and street uh, lights uh, mean uh, they have information signs and caution signs and warning signs and stop signs. All right. And we have to obey these signs while driving or pay the consequences, such as tickets, injuries, or even death. Mm -hmm. All these signs and laws of the road are for the safety of all that are traveling on the roads. Mm -hmm. And it gets crazy out there sometimes. Mm -hmm. I see it every day. I've seen some bad accidents and I wonder how did they, how did they mm -hmm. end up like that? Yeah. Cars upside down and turned over, yeah. smashed up all kinds of ways. Because they wasn't obeying the rules of the road. Mm. Or somebody wasn't and caused it. Likewise, it is very important for us to know the laws of Christ. That's right. And obey Him. Mm. It's very important for us to know how to become a Christian and how to live as faithful Christians. We have to read the book. We have to read the book. The Bible is our instructions yes. from God. Mm -hmm. You got to read it. That's if you want to pass this test of faith called life. Mm -hmm. And if we pass this test, Jesus Christ will reward us with eternal life yes. in heaven. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 22, if you will. Revelation 22, we'll look at verse 12. Jesus says, and behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. You see, this life is a test, it's a test of faith. Mm -hmm. And there are no multiple choices on this test. Yes, sir. And when it comes down to the right church to be saved in, it's either true or false. Right. Either true or false, because Jesus Christ only built one yes. true church. Yes. And it's according to the scriptures. Therefore, all others are false, according to the scriptures. Don't get mad at the mailman. <laughs> Just deliver the message. <laughs> Brother Williams, can you give me Matthew chapter 16 if you will? Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18, please. Mm. 
when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, say, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but who say he that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. I, my, and it, in verse 18, mm -hmm. that passage of scripture, mm -hmm. refers to the one church mm -hmm. that Christ said he would build. Mm -hmm. Now turn, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Ephesians 4, verse 3. It says, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, mm -hmm. one Lord, yes. one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Yes, and, you know, when I read this, I was thinking, you know, you don't have to be a genius to understand that one means one. Yes. You don't have to have a Ph.D. No, sir. See, Christ is the head, and the, he only has one body. Right. Mm -hmm. And he is the savior of it. Yeah. One head, one body. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ is the church of Christ. That's right. Jesus Christ is the head of his body, the church. I don't think I can make it any simpler and plainer than that. Amen. You know, sometimes we have to choose between true or false. You have to make choices sometimes. Sometimes when taking tests, we may have to choose between true or false. Yes. Either one or the other. One's going to be right and one's going to be wrong. That's right. And in this test of faith called life, we are doing the will of God according to his word. Mm -hmm. Then we have chosen to be true. When we're doing like God say do and what he say do, <laughs> and how he say do it, mm -hmm. we're choosing that true answer. Living according to the New Testament doctrine of Christ, doing the way the Lord commands us to do. Yes, but on the other hand, if we are not doing the will of God, then we have chosen to be false. We've chosen the false answer if we're not doing what the Lord asks us to do. Brother Williams, can you give me James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25? James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. For be ye doers of the word right now, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Mm -hmm. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgiveth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, right. and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. Yes. Thank you, brother. See, if we are a forgetful hearer, and if you are a doer, and if you're not a doer of the Lord's will, then you will not be able to pass this test of faith called life. That's right. We got to be doers and hearers. Mm -hmm. Choose the truth. Answer. That's right. In Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. It says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, yes. to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Mm -hmm. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, right. teaching and admonishing one another, 
in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, sing it with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. All right. You see, we should be thankful. We should be really thankful that we are called to be in this one body of Christ. Amen. And we know that the body of, it is the church. The church of Christ, and, and, and we need to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. That's right. And what's that we do? We do it by the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Giving thanks to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything we do here, we've got to have authority from the Lord. It's got to be in the scripture. That's right. Can't be doing things that are not, a script, that are not scriptural. Let us stick to the word, stick Amen. to the Lord. Do it the way he wanted to be done. Amen. You see, if we do these things, then we will have a very good chance of passing this test of faith called life. Mm -hmm. If we do it the way the Lord commands us to do it, we have a very good chance of passing this test. See, there are some so-called apostles and prophets, and I heard Brother William speak on it this morning. There's as many so-called apostles and prophets out in the world today. Uh, and, and they claim that, that God gave them some personal instructions to give to their followers, saying that, that, that they talk with God, or God talk with them. And there are many in the world that, many like to hear this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But let me show you something. In Hebrews chapter 1, Brother Williams, give me Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. God, who had sundry time, yeah. and in dire things, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and whom also he made the world. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, brother. Uh, see, God spoke to the prophets in the days of old. Yes, he did. But now he speaks to us through his Son, Jesus Christ, on the pages of inspiration. Mm -hmm. He speaks to us through the Holy Bible. This is how we get our instructions from the Lord. We don't need God whispering in somebody's ear. Mm -hmm. God has given us all the instructions we need mm -hmm. to get from this life to the next. Yes, sir. We have everything we need. That's right. That's right. Turn me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 12. It says, Yea, all and all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. For evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Yes, sir which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see, don't be seduced by educated words of philosophy. Mm -hmm. They will use those big words and make you think they're so smart, they know, they know more than the Bible. Yeah. Don't be seduced by that thing. Don't be deceived by doctors of men. People, you'd be amazed with some of the stuff they come up with. Yeah. Don't be deceived by the doctrine of men. We have everything we need to get us to heaven. <coughs> it's right here in the Holy Scripture. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, sure, we can find an answer in the Bible. Yes. Because we are thoroughly furnished with everything we need. And if anybody tell you to believe something that is not in the scriptures, All right. don't believe it. Hey. Tell them, show me where it's in the scriptures. Show me what the word of God says so. 
Second Peter, you turn with me there, Second Peter, chapter one. We'll look at verse 16. It says, For we have not followed cunning devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard. When we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Wherein to ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Yes. Until the day star, until the day star arise in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> For the prophecy came not in old time mm -hmm. by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I, I, I encounter people that say, oh, man, you broke the Bible, try to keep y'all you know, doing what they want you to do, and this and that. No. Yes, Holy men wrote the Bible. They were inspired by God. That's right. This thing came from God. It didn't come from man. Right. And if you keep going over to uh, 2 Peter, the next chapter, verse 1 and 2, says, but there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who probably shall bring in damnable heresies, yes. even deny the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Many will follow the false teaching and false doctrine and false leaders. But we have to be careful of that. That's right. Verse 19 of, of, of 2 Peter 1 tells us that we have a sure word of prophecy. You can guarantee it. It's a sure word of prophecy that was confirmed by God when they heard the voice that came down from heaven and said, This is my beloved son whom I well pleased. Hear ye him. And they were eyewitnesses of this thing. So it's not something that man made up. This is the Word of God, pure and simple. Mm -hmm. See, we have one have to be aware of false prophets and false teachers. Those worldly preachers will put on a show just to preach, to, to reach people's emotions mm -hmm. and to reach their wives and persons. False teachers will say and do whatever it takes just to make their followers feel good. Mm -hmm. They will tell them all the things they like to hear, such as prosperity preacher because when the preacher starts talking about how you can get some money a money blessing mm -hmm. people will take it they will take that hook line and sinker and bend the pole yeah. and I think about my brother Nair every time I think about that <laughs> they will take the hook line and sinker and bend the pole when you start talking about getting your money blessing oh, <laughs> most people are looking for financial gain Yes, yes. When we should be trying to save our souls from the eternal fire. Mm -hmm. yes, all right. We should be trying to save our souls from the eternal fire. That's more important than financial gain. Yes, yes. Turn me to Matthew chapter 16, if you will. Matthew chapter 16, we look at verse 26. What? Matthew 16, 26. Matthew 16, 26. Matthew 16, 26. It says, what? For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mm -hmm. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. All right. See, we have to do the will of God. Mm -hmm. 
and we will get, we'll get our reward. Our reward is in heaven. We laid up our treasures in heaven. You know, Lord always bless us to, to, enough to maintain and live a good life. Mm -hmm. All our necessities that we need, we have. Mm -hmm. God blesses us each and every day. But to save our soul is much more important. Brother yes, Williams, can you give me Matthew 7, verses 19, please? Matthew chapter 7, verse 19 through 23. <clears throat> Matthew 7, 19 through 23. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in me. Amen. See, we have to do the will of God by the authority of Jesus Christ. Or we will miss heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to take a chance of missing heaven. I don't want to fail this test of faith called life. All right. You see, if we do the will of God, then we are true worshipers of God. We will fall in that false category. We'll be in that true category. True worshipers of God. In John chapter 4, if you turn with me there. Verse 23, John chapter 4. It says, But the hour cometh, and now it is, yes, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, the true worshipers of God in spirit will worship God in spirit and in truth through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And not according to worldly doctrines. We will worship God in spirit and in truth. And if you're a true worshiper of God, let your light shine. Let your light shine and glorify God. That others may see that you are a true Christian and not a false one. There, there's no way we can con convince anyone to be a Christian if we ourselves are not living as true Christians. You know, none of us are perfect, but we're doing the best we can. Oh, yes. We're doing the best we can yes. to try to be true Christians. So let your light shine mm -hmm. that we may be able to glorify God. In 1 John chapter 2, if you turn with me there. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. For he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 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 You know, it's, it's very important. Yes. So very important to make good decisions mm -hmm. while taking this test of faith called life. All right. Because we will not have another opportunity to take this test over again. Mm -hmm. We won't have another opportunity. We've got to do it while we live in this life. That's right. Yeah. We have one time to get it right. So we'll continue to prepare for the test and study hard because we have one time to get it right. So let's try our best to be true worshipers of God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that we can pass this test of faith called life. And to be a true worshiper of God, you must first hear the word of God. 
Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Yes. Then you must repent. You must turn away from your sinful lifestyle. In Luke 13, 5, Jesus said, Nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Then we must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In Matthew 10, 32 and 33, Jesus says, He that confess me before me and him will also will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. And he that deny me before men, him also will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Then we have to be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. In Acts chapter 2, on that day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the rest of the apostles and preached the gospel of Christ. And those that were there were pricked in their heart and said, Men and brother, what should we do? Peter told them in Acts 2.30, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive a gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And many believed that day. That's right. and, the, and about 3,000 souls were baptized into Christ. And the Lord had to save to the church that day. In Acts 2 30 47. So, and after we go completed our obedience of water baptism, you have to live faith. In Revelation, Revelation 2 10, Jesus said, Be thou faithful unto death. I'll give you a crown of life. If there's anyone here that needs to repent, we ask you to uh, come forward. If you need to be baptized. For the mission of sins, we hope you have the courage to do so. It was ever last too late. Yeah. You got to stand, you led in the closing prayer. Psalm. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the way that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with His eye. Thank you for visiting the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Hope to see you again soon.